So yeah, it's great to speak with you. And uh, of course, many people know you as Y Dot Farmer on Twitter. I've got to ask you, where does the name come from? How did you come up with that? Well, I think uh, just as you and many of us that are working in the pharmaceutical industry, um, what we hear us say most is, why not? Why not bring this online? Why not engage? Why not uh, use social media? Um, so that for me has been my mantra <laughs> in the past years. And uh, when I was thinking of a, of a name for, for a blog, the, the why not was definitely in the head. Uh, now, why not go online? Pharma is a bit long for a blog and for a Twitter handle. It takes up the 40, 140 characters. Um, and so the dot was uh, a play on words and say, why dot pharma? Um, yeah, so it's definitely a, a little bit of a, of a cheeky way to, to challenge the status quo, I guess. So you've really been working within social media and digital within pharma since it's, I guess it's kind of early origins. So how have you seen it change over the last few years? I think I've seen the question move from why to how. Uh, when I started in 2008, it was all about why. Why should we consider social media? Why should we engage in it? Who do we reach there? Um, why is it worth the effort, the money? Uh, also, as well as identifying within the pharmaceutical companies the pioneers that were willing to take this on, um, to find the functions that were most um, prone to, to be using uh, social media effectively and successfully. That was uh, where we started, I think, in, in 2008, making the case for it. I think during the course of 2009, it went into a phase of um, what platforms and setting up the pharma presence. So creating the Facebook pages, the Twitter accounts, um, the YouTube channels for the company presence. And what I've seen uh, lately, which is really uh, exciting uh, for me, is, is then using these platforms, but also engaging in general in the social media conversation and uh, making that possible through the, through the house. How do we reply to adverse events? Um, whereas before, it was like, no, we can't even get into a situation where there might be a, a possible adverse event coming our way. Now it's how do we work with uh, regulatory, with the internal processes to um, monitor for adverse events and to respond to them? How do we um, get medical information to the people that are asking uh, it from us? Um, how do we deal with um, questions uh, and, and how do we channel them to the, to the right people internally? So do you think, or have you seen a tipping point within pharma and its use of social media, or do you think we still to get to that point? I always dislike uh, looking at it from a pharmaceutical point of view. I think the tipping point is social media. The tipping point is the conversation, and that is there. If you look at the, the volume of discussions that are taking place uh, around the specific disease area, if you look at the number and volume of doctors that are in forums like Sermo, like Doctors Net UK, if you're looking at how hashtag conversations on Twitter, there was a, the latest one was, was ASL that surpassed the 10,000 tweets during the duration of a couple of days of a Congress. Um, and the Congress organizers themselves, like ASCO, um, doing a fantastic job of putting applications, integrating the Twitter stream into those applications, etc. Um, then, you know, whether there's a tipping point for FAMO or not, I, I mean, who cares? <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a given, yeah. So, you know, as you mentioned, there are a lot of exciting things happening, the ASCO tweet stream and so on, but, you know, within the pharma companies themselves, where do you see the most innovation going on when it comes to online campaigns, online initiatives? Um, in terms of uh, companies, if you're asking me, I, I think that Bernie Engelheim and Rosh are doing a great job from a company perspective in engaging in social media. So A, from a process and, and guidelines perspective, um, having those clearly outlined, educating their people, um, and uh, also from uh, really being in the conversation, especially uh, on Twitter and Facebook. Um, then I think uh, it's a case-by-case -case and disease area sort of uh, perspective you have to take. So I think Sanofi and Aventus, for example, are doing a great job in the diabetes space. Um, 
J and J is doing a fantastic thing in the in the women health and the mommy bloggersphere. Um, Mark Sirono has some uh, exciting initiatives with the MS community. So, but then it it really is maybe more spotty. I say like one one pool of activity, uh, one branching that is, is taking this on, and, and maybe not as as much as a company wide uh, activity. Sure. I mean, I guess as you mentioned, so you're, a lot of exciting stuff is happening in the, the kind of broader healthcare space, which is not necessarily the pharma companies themselves. So, what kind of things do you see there that you, you think are really exciting and, and perhaps pharma could learn from? I think the next step for for pharma is to um, get away from the the platform driven approach and and just look at it and say what great content do we have and we have fantastic content that we can share and where should we share it because the conversation is coming upon it. Um, so creating link inventories of the best information that pharma can possibly give out in a format that is easily digestible, like social media lies your, your information. And again, I think Beringer Ingenheim did a fantastic job with the White Room um, it's a, it's a press and um, patient and HCP uh, room full of links, disease area, backgrounders, etc. Um, and, and making that information available. That's, uh, that's one thing. Um, I think the other exciting um, piece that, that, that I see and that is, has been widely underexploited is the capacity for social media to capture data. And you see more and more of um, health outcomes initiatives, um, health trackers, um, collaboration between uh, the NHS and social media um, platform, for example, as Health Unlocked has shown in the UK. And, and those things excite me because they open up for, for pharma a completely new way to gather market insights, but also ultimately consider clinical trials and um, outcome studies. So are you saying it's more about, I guess, content curation and, you know, working with existing communities and necessarily creating new ones or trying to create new content? Is that, is that a fair summary? Not really. I do believe in new content, especially if you see that the, the conversation is, uh, is asking for it. Um, but I'm a big believer in collaboration. From the start, I think that um, pharma should think really long and hard before creating uh, their own forum um, when you can exploit a conversation or engage in a conversation that's already out there it seems like um, a waste of energy and resources so you've seen pharma develop and we're both seeing a lot of change at the moment but if you look forward where do you think pharma will be when it comes to social media or perhaps it would be better to say where would you like to see pharma when it comes to social media in maybe two or three years' time? I think one of the things I, I like most is um, social media to get integrated into the core processes uh, within the pharmaceutical uh, companies. And those companies that will be successful will be, will be the ones that can integrate social media into the communications process, into the clinical trial recruitment, into their medical information uh, processes, etc. And, um, and I'd like to see more of the spirit of saying, why not? <laughs> How do we share this information that we have um, as a starting point, how do we augment that information because people are asking for it and, and we can within the regulations and going away from this focus on um, how can we use this as a marketing tool, um, how, you know, we need guidance from the FDA on, uh, on DTC, how to do DTC via social media when, uh, quite frankly, I don't see that that's the biggest potential of social media. So you thank you very much for your time. I always find it personally very interesting speaking to you, and um, I know the Hicks and EU tweet chat on a Friday has been very useful for me, which you've been pivoting and setting up. So thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you for the interview, Paul.